well spent? Some taxpayers don't think so. And Aid on Your Side has their backs. Mark's on it because you paid for it. The Cross Bay Ferry stopped running this morning due to heavy fog in Tampa Bay. But one critic says that's not the only problem. A Gulfport City Council member insists that the ridership on that new service does not justify the cost to taxpayers. You paid $1.4 million for this pilot project, and that's why Mark's on it tonight. And the question I guess a lot of people want to know, and it's still early, let's point this out, but is this going to be a boom or a bust, or do we know yet? Well, Keith, so far the numbers show that the ridership is good on weekends, but it's dismal during the week. And that's what Gulfport City Council member and ferry critic Dan Leidecke discovered when he checked it out last Tuesday. Dan Leidecke shot this video of the Cross Bay Ferry arriving in St. Pete last Tuesday hey, morning and posted it on Facebook. You were the only one? You had the whole boat to yourself? Yeah. Leidecke tells me he was tired of seeing cheerleading news reports and wanted to see for himself how the ferry was actually performing with passengers. Uh, I was surprised. I expected to see at least two. You know, I was hoping for maybe 20 to 50, but uh, I was completely surprised. The ferry can transport as many as 149 paying passengers on its daily sail between downtown St. Pete and downtown Tampa, but rarely gets a full boat. The governments of St. Pete, Pinellas, Tampa, and Hillsboro have invested $1.4 million of your tax dollars on this six-month pilot project, and Leidecke expects better. I consider it a definite waste of taxpayer money, and if you can't save people time or money, what's the point? We watched two commuters get off the boat in Tampa early this morning. The return trip was canceled due to fog. Ridership numbers show few, if any, passengers during weekday commuter runs and a surge on weekends for recreational users. The commuter numbers are not very encouraging at this point. Well, you know, it's a pilot project and it's a slim market. Ed Tarancic works as a consultant for the ferry, and he insists that 7,500 passengers during the first month, mostly on weekends, is encouraging, even if only about 4,700 of them actually paid for tickets. Is that a good use of taxpayers' money? Well, 1.4 million is a great use of taxpayer dollars because you find out what people really think about this, and they can touch it, they can feel it, they can use it to go to different destinations. St. Pete Mayor Rick Kreisman, who was the primary political mover behind this pilot project, sent us a statement today saying he's incredibly pleased by the weekend numbers so far, and he hopes that commuter traffic will pick up after the holidays. Keith? Now, we've talked about this. A, a couple things stand out to me. One, there's no real goal, so we don't really know what good right. is. How many right. are we talking? What is good? Uh, but yeah, maybe it's doing well on the weekends, not so much during the weekday. That sounds like it's a tourist kind of an attraction. So far, yes. So will this thing ever make any money? Well, even Ed Tarancic said it's not going to pay for itself. That's the nature of the beast. No transit system does. But he does hope in his hopes and dreams that this will become the most successful transit system in Tampa Bay once the tourists start rolling in at the end of the year and for some of those big events we have. And it'll get some work out here because we got some big events coming in Tampa yes, Bay. We so we're going to keep checking to back on this one to see what happens. I'd like to see it survive. Sure. It's, <laughs> really, a, it's, it's a nice thing. It's kind of cool, but is it worth it? It's costly. You're on it because we paid for it. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah.